Here we'll call the case of Erica Michelle Carter versus Bobby Ray Carter the third. This matter is before the court uh, to review the issues of custody, parenting time, child support, and other relief. Assumption the parties have engaged in mediation with Ms. Uh, Pratt for the front of the court. Uh, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Christina Hills, representing the plaintiff, Erica Carter. Uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Carter appears to be present. In addition, uh, uh, the defendant, uh, Attorney Jason Kazmerk is present representing the defendant father, Bobby Carter III. Mr. Carter is present. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. The mediation was limited uh, primarily to custody and parenting time. Child support, is that correct? It was everything, Judge. We were able to pull together some financials and uh, reach a complete resolution today, Judge. Wonderful. Who would like to place that agreement on the record? I'm going to give it a shot. My notes are a little bit jumbled, so I will trust Mr. Kazmarek and Ms. LaPrad to uh, help me out if I miss anything or get anything wrong. Thank you. Please, Ms. Hills. Thank you. The parties have four minor children. They've agreed that they'll share joint legal and joint physical custody of those children. Uh, the temporary order that we just put in place a couple of days ago uh, would remain in effect, um, all of those provisions, until such time as the divorce judgment would be final. Parties have agreed to waive um, as much as they can of the six month waiting period. Um, and we'll provide testimony uh, from them that they believe that's in the children's best interest. However, we understand that the case cannot uh, be final until the expiration of 60 days from filing, which I believe would be approximately April 1st. Um, parties have agreed that we will include standard inherent rights of the ch children language. Um, prohibition on disparaging remarks and discussion of the case with the minor children would be included in the divorce judgment. Parenting time for a defendant father uh, would be as follows. He will have every Wednesday overnight, um, Wednesday from 4 p.m. until Thursday morning to school or 9 a.m. if there's no school. He would have weekends on a two-week rotation in uh, week one. He would have the children from Friday at 4 p.m. until Monday morning to school or 9 a.m. if there's no school. And in week two, he would have Saturday morning at 9 a.m. until Monday morning to school or 9 a.m. if there's no school. And he would be starting uh, the rotation in week two uh, this weekend, uh, commencing March 18, uh, 2023. Um, Mr. Um, Carter and the minor child, Leah, are going to do family counseling. Uh, we've discussed them talking with Leah's current counselor about whether she would be willing to do that family counseling for the two of them. If she is not, then the parties would seek recommendations from that counselor and um, agree on a counselor who is covered by uh, the child's insurance. Parties uh, also agreed that father would have additional times as the parties could agree. Holiday parenting time would be as agreed by the parties. However, if they could not agree, they will abide by the friend of the court holiday schedule. Um, I will attach a copy of that to the judgment. The parties have agreed that they will use the app close uh, co-parenting app to communicate, except in the case of an emergency, of course. Um, with regard to child support, we would start that April uh, 1st, 2023. Uh, base support would be $1,199, ordinary medical uh, 106, and 1,305 total. That is an upward deviation from the child support guidelines, so we will include a deviation addendum. Um, part of the some of the reasons for the deviation addendum are that uh, my client is going to be providing some clothing uh, to uh, Mr. Carter for the minor children. She is waiving spousal support to which she otherwise, uh, at least arguably, would have been entitled. And she has agreed to take on all of the uh, co-pays and deductibles for the minor children over and above the ordinary medical. Um, he will provide insurance for the minor children such that she does not have to. And we will provide for 
uh, an automatic review of child support once the oldest child is emancipated and no longer subject to the child support order. There is no child support arrearage as there was no temporary order regarding child support, uh, but we'll include the sta standard language that indicates any arrearage owed to the state of Michigan would be preserved. Um, standard domicile and 100 mile rule language would be included. Uh, the parties have agreed to split 50-50, the required costs of any agreed upon extracurricular activities for the minor children. The minor children are to attend all agreed upon extracurricular activities unless um, they are ill or injured. And the activities which they have agreed upon at this point for the children are Royal Rangers, uh, which is a, a church event, gymnastics, cheer, and wrestling. Um, as I indicated, uh, mother's going to pay the co-pays and deduct deductibles for the minor children over and above the ordinary medical amount. And uh, she will also pay the entire cost of the school uniforms um, for the uh, private school that any of the children uh, attend. And I believe it's just the youngest in a private preschool currently. Is that correct? No, uh, for, uh, all three of them are in um, a charter school. Okay. Very good, thank you. All right, so she will um, pay for the cost of the uniforms for the children. Spousal support would be barred as to both parties. We would include standard language uh, regarding life insurance. Each of them would be entitled to keep the pension and retirement benefits in their own names. Mr. Carter is going to be awarded the marital home at 15516 Parkside. He is going to assume the mortgage indebtedness, taxes, and all other expenses of ownership, and will indemnify and hold Ms. Carter harmless from those expenses. She will uh, give him her interest in the property by a quick claim deed if it is requested um, by Mr. Carter, and he would be entitled to uh, maintain all of the equity uh, in that property as well. And it is only in his name, so there is no obligation for him to refinance. With regard to personal property, they're each going to keep what's in their own possession and any debt associated with that property. Uh, Ms. Carter is awarded the 2010 Jeep Patriot and the 1995 pop-up camper. Mr. Carter is awarded the 2014 Explorer. Uh, they'll each keep any debt on their own uh, vehicles that they're being awarded. Each party is awarded all bank and financial accounts in his or her own name. Uh, the parties have indicated there are no joint accounts. Uh, Mr. Carter is going to continue to make payments on Ms. Carter's phone as well as the minor children's phones until they are paid in full. With regard to marital debt, um, except as I'll note in a moment, they would each be responsible for the debt in their own names and hold the other harmless from liability for those debts. Ms. Carter is going to be responsible for the one main financial debt. Um, one main is the name of the, the lender. And she would also be responsible for any medical debt for the minor children or herself, uh, which predate the judgment of divorce. He will be, uh, Mr. Carter would be responsible for all other marital debt. With regard to tax exemptions, um, with the four children, while there are four available, um, they will each take two uh, each year. When there are three available, um, Mr. Carter will take two in odd tax, four odd tax years. And when there uh, is only one available, he will take the one for odd tax years. Parties both acknowledge that they've disclosed all of their assets and liabilities during the course of negotiations. They would each be responsible for their own attorney fees. And Ms. Uh, Carter is requesting the option to have her maiden name restored to her in the future if she so chooses. I believe that's the entire agreement. The only thing Thank I you, would Mr. add I, that I don't think was mentioned was vacations as they can agree. And the summer parenting time schedule is the same as the school parenting time schedule. Agreed. All right, uh, with that Just, clarification, to Mr. Kansmerick, Ms. Hill exactly stated your agreement. Your Very school, well, is that yes. correct? That's right. Um, no, Jason. Well, Mr. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, uh, when she said that it was just the co-pays, uh, it was all medical expenses for the kids. I just wanted to. That's what the agreement was. Yeah, so Erica's going to be responsible for all medical 
Yes, that's, that should be. So that's co pays, bills, everything. I just wanted to make sure that was clarified. Okay. I'm sorry, do we have clarification on that issue, Mr. Kazmarek, Ms. Hills? I believe so, Your Honor. The only co pays and deductibles would be she's responsible for the first $345 per child. Uh, or, is that right? Yes. That per child. Ago. Anyway, oh. so anything over and above that uh, is going to be her responsibility. So essentially, 100% of all of the co pays and deductibles would be her responsibility under this agreement. Do you understand that, Ms. Carter? Yes. Well, I think I think well, what I what we understood it as well. I think what Bobby's saying is she's going to pay. So I think she's responsible for the first sixteen hundred and thirty-two dollars, if I'm not mistaken, for the four children. I think it's four hundred eight per child. It's four fifty-four um, per child. I'm sorry. My yeah, understanding yeah, sorry. is that mom was going to be responsible for all out-of-pocket medical expenses, which is what I believe is what Mr. Carter is trying to make sure is put in there, which is exactly what Ms. Hill said, but in the legal terms. So yes, that's exactly what you requested, Mr. Carter. Okay. Sorry, I just didn't understand the terminology. Okay. And that's why okay. I'm clarifying. Right, it's good to ask that question, Mr. Carter. Um, are they sworn? They were the party sworn. All right. Um, all right, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, can you both uh, please raise your right hand to be sworn? <clears throat> Do you both solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so I'll be God? Yes, yes Your Honor. Thank you. All right, Ms. Hills, we're going to begin with Ms. Carter, please. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Will you state your name for the record, please? Erica Carter. You are the plaintiff in this case, correct? Yes. Yeah, and at the time you filed your complaint for divorce, had you been a resident of Michigan for at least 180 days? Yes. And of Monroe County for at least 10 days. Yes. Is it true that there's been a breakdown of your marriage relationship to the extent that the objects of matrimony have been destroyed and there's no reasonable likelihood that your marriage can be preserved? Yes. Are you pregnant? No. You have four minor children, is that correct? Correct. Leah, who's 12, Bentley, who's 10, Julia, who is eight, and Piper, who's three? Yes. All right. And your maiden name is Jennings, J-E-N-N-I-N-G-S? Yes. And are you asking for the opportunity, if you so choose uh, in the future, to uh, have that maiden name restored? Yes. All right. Have you heard the proposed uh, settlement agreement, which has been placed on the record? Yes, I have. You understand all of its terms? Yes. Do you have any questions as you sit here right now? No. Well, you've had enough time to think about all of these issues? Yes. We achieved this agreement as a result of mediation today. Is that correct? Yes. And you had a full opportunity to participate in that mediation? Yes. You have um, agreed that spousal support is barred as to both you and Mr. Carter. Is that correct? Yes. You understand that means that neither one of you would be able to come into court in the future and ask for it to be awarded? Yes. Do you understand that we could have done further discovery in this case? We're very early on in the case. We could have asked for more documents, uh, more information uh, from uh, Mr. Carter through his attorney. Yes. And you're waiving your right to ask for any additional information? Yes. Do you also understand we could have had a trial in this case? Yes. We could have asked Judge Bronlick to make all of the decisions after presenting him with all of the uh, evidence in the case. You might have done better, you might have done worse, or the judge could have ordered something substantially similar to what you've agreed to. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. And you're waiving that right to a trial by entering into this agreement? Yes. Are you satisfied with my services? Yes. Are you asking the court to sign off on a judgment containing the terms which has been put on the record today? Yes. Are you also asking the court um, to enter this judgment once the initial 60 day uh, time frame from filing has passed? Yes. And do you believe that waiving the balance of that six month waiting period would be in your children's best interest? Yes. Will that allow you to begin to move on with your lives? Yes. How long have you been separated? Are you separated from Mr. Carter? Yes. How long have you been separated? Seven months. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. Thank you, Ms. Hills. Mr. Kazmarek, do you have any questions of Ms. Carter? No, Judge. Thank you. Questions for Mr. Carter, please. Yes, Judge. <clears throat> Bobby, you could please state your name for the record. Bobby Ray Carter III. Okay. And you heard the uh, settlement terms placed on the record today? Yes, sir. And you participated in a mediation where those terms were discussed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And were those terms accurately uh, discussed today on the record in front of the judge? Yes, sir. 
And you understand, again, like Mr. Hill stated, this is early on in the process. You have a right to get more information if needed, but you're waiving that right for additional discovery of documents from Erica? Yes, sir. Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay. And you understand you had a right to go to trial. You could have got more, could have got less, but the terms say today are full, are your full and final settlement? Yes, sir. And again, you are asking the court to waive the, the balance of the six month waiting period after the additional six days has passed. Do you believe that's in the best interest of you and your children? Yes, sir. And the custody parenting time provisions for the children, are they in the children's best interest? Yes, sir. I have nothing further. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Kaczmarek, is Mr. Carter also asking the court waive the statute of waiting period and the judgment of divorces as soon as possible after April 1st? That's what you're asking for, Bobby. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, All right. Sir. All right. Thank you. Ms. Hills, do you have any questions, Mr. Carter? Um, just briefly, uh, Mr. Carter, have you uh, have you disclosed all of your assets and your liabilities in the course of negotiations here today? Yes, ma'am. You represented in mediation that uh, you have no longer have any retirement benefits whatsoever with Ford Motor Company. Is that true, that you represented yes, that? Yes, it's true? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and, and is that because you uh, have no more TESPI account and no pension with that company? Me, me and Erica, <clears throat> me and Erica, we, uh, when I left board, we used that money to purchase our new home and purchase vehicles and stuff. And she testified to that as well in the mediation. All right, and uh, you did you ever have a pension with Ford Motor Company? No. Okay, thank you, I'm satisfied. All right, Ms. Hills, you'll prepare the judgment, is that correct? I will. Very well, the court would like to thank and acknowledge uh, Ms. Pratt for her assistance in helping facilitate the resolution of this matter, as well as, of course, Attorneys Hills and Kazmarek. Uh, at the request of the uh, two parents, uh, their belief to be investors or their children, the court will, in fact, waive the remaining balance of statutory waiting period and end of the judgment divorce upon receipt sometime after April 1st, 2023. Uh, lastly, based upon the testimony that's been presented this afternoon, as well as complaint following this case, court finds that jurisdiction has been established. Court further finds that there has been a breakdown of the marriage relationship to the extent that the opposite matrimony have been destroyed. There appears to be no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. The court upon receipt of that uh, proposed judgment, the court will sign the judgment, and at that time, the court will order that the marriage between the parties be dissolved and judgment shall enter, granting a divorce from the bonds of matrimony. And lastly, the court would like to applaud Mr. Mr. Carter for reaching your own agreement. The reality is you're tied together for life because of the children. So make it good for each other and the children. There's been significant events in the future you both need to be part of, graduations, birthdays, weddings. So make it good, and there will be bumps in the road, but they can all be addressed to effective communication. So please keep that in mind. All right, with that, that will conclude the matter. Everyone can zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much, Your Honor. You too. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Stephanie. Okay. Thank you. I thought that was pretty interesting how that case went. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you soon.